and I, it's not, it's not very strange that you call it the Beehive uh, podcast. I mean, I, I tell me when why. I mentioned, when I mentioned it to some people, they would say, well, yeah, yeah, the Beehive podcast, uh, because you know, the, the Beehive has honey yeah, and uh, the honey is not created there. I mean, the bees travel sometimes 50 miles and they pick the best of the flowers from all over the world from all over the geographic area where they go, mm -hmm. and they come and they synthesize it into a honeycomb. So what you're doing is actually that. You're, you're you know, bringing a lot of people together, information together, and you're really putting it together for the benefit of everyone that listens to it. So it's uh, it's wonderful, and I'm, I'm not just telling you, I'm not, this is not just a compliment. I'm just telling you this is a fact. My, my uncle Joe, Joe Hack, who's uh, who's not only a friend of mine and my family's, but a uh, 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 highly respected and knowledgeable member of our community uh, here in in Canada. But we're from Yanta, Lebanon, and I thought, what a cool episode it would be if I had you on, and and we could go back to the history of our people, our community, our culture, and uh, some of the first few people that immigrated here back in the day such as i think it was your family was one of the first so i thought you'd take us to the beginning of and yanta is located um on the eastern border of lebanon yes yeah very the, it, it, the, do you call it south Bekaa valley you know it's it's it is really on the eastern border yeah it's one of the uh, highest uh, villages that are uh, continually inhabited in in the middle east so it's uh, about 1500 1600 uh, Fifteen hundred and fifty meters. meters. Actually, the Ban the Banff Mountain is about five thousand feet. Yeah. So it's just like consider yourself in Banff and you're looking at the top of the mountain. That's how it's beautiful. We get the the cool breeze. Well, that uh, Lebanon has to offer. It's actually, you know, the, not only the height, the geographic height, but yeah. the uh, the the actual sublimity of its people. That's, mm -hmm. that's the more important nah, okay. <laughs> that's deep <laughs> we're already starting off with the deep no, stuff but, that's, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for for making the time especially because we had you wait because of our technical difficulties that's uh, seeing pleasure. you as you know is, is always a, a pride and a, always a, a pleasure for me you always make us feel and, good Uncle uh, Joe and no that's the truth and I'm, I just want to start by uh, telling you that uh, what you're doing is, is a huge undertaking and you're investing a lot of your time and effort and uh, you, you have been always an intuitive person with with different thoughts about things but this is quite important not just to you to to a lot of people and they appreciate it but they don't express that appreciation but i do uh, express my gratitude and i thank you so much for of course thinking of me of course, but you 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 definitely always make me feel good every time I see you, and and not just me, but a lot of people. But well, you have a, a a way with your words that's you. uh, that's very deep, and and like I said, you're a very knowledgeable person, and uh, and it's 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 my pleasure to have you on, and I'm glad that you said yes. And um, the reason, because we talked about this before, we went for coffee, but the reason I wanted you on because I thought, you know what, there's a lot of people my age and younger that are in our community that don't have quite the understanding of our history, of our country, our community, uh, our culture. Um, and, and you lose a little bit of that, not to downplay, because I'm born and raised here, so I consider myself Canadian, just like the next guy. Of course. Uh, we grew up playing hockey and doing all these Canadian things, and we still feel that way. But not to downplay what Canada has to offer and, and, and what this country does for us and how much we love it. But you do tend to lose some of your cultural upbringing by um, almost getting lost in it and, and, and losing a little bit of your roots. So there's a lot of us that need help when it comes to um, identifying or explaining who we are as people. Um, and not that it's different than many other religions, but I thought we'd touch up a little bit on that. So in Yanta, how old is is, is Yanta, our, our, our community? Like how did that... Uh, uh, maybe take us from the the beginning. Well, beginning. Yeah. well let me let me preface this by saying that uh, 
the natural evolution of societies is exactly what you're talking about. Uh, people migrate or emigrate within even a, a geographic region and they get together and they interact with the geography they live in, the mountains and the rivers and the fields and the trees and yeah. the atmosphere and and they develop a certain personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, Canada has uh, is really a land of, of immigrants uh, and uh, whoever landed here many, many years ago, they knew they were coming to a new country, a new culture, etc., just like our forefathers did. But you could see now that we have, I don't know how many, you know, you look at the, the when I taught school many years ago, uh, there were mostly white kids and maybe one or two, uh, not one, uh, non-white. Yeah. But now you go into any, any school room in Canada, and you'd find that, you know, different col- cultures. It's a melting pot. <laughs> and and I, I sure hope they uh, they do it as a melting pot. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the things that are happening are not on the basis of melting pot. But and, and I have my own views about this. I think mm-hmm. that, you know, very basically what I say is that Canada must emphasize uh, and, and assist people uh, who arrive, whether three months ago or three years ago or more, they must help them to become Canadians. I think most Canadians share the thought that we all must have our primary allegiance mm-hmm. to Canada. Yeah. Now, uh, it is unfortunate that a lot of the emphasis has been in the past 30, 40 years on something called multiculturalism. So, and I, you know, I'm sure many people will disagree with me, but I'm not for multiculturalism. I am for Canadianism. Let's get all of us to become Canadians. And I always use the example of Singapore. Singapore was a very, very poor country, and they had three different ethnic groups. I don't want to spend much time, yeah. but just to prove the point. And they had uh, Malay, Chinese, and Pakistanis in three different religions. Mm-hmm. And it was horrible. Like people used to die if they would go from one ghetto to the other. Yeah. And then uh, Lee Kwan took over, and within, I think, 30 years, what he did was, uh, at, when he took over, he said, look, people who are 14 years and older, I'm not going to be able to, if you will, deprogram you because you've already been brainwashed yeah. into what it is. <clears throat> but he started a, uh, a, a new policy, a new program, a new strategy called Singapore One Nation, One People. And Smart. he and he started doing the uh, doing it in schools. It was uh, right from kindergarten all the way up. He brought the three different ethnicities, if you will. He put them together, and he said, "You're all Singaporeans. Mm-hmm. You're all you all belong to Singapore. Your allegiance is to Singapore. No more borders. No more borders. So and no more multi ghettos. It's yeah. it's now and look what's where Singapore is right now. They all feel." But they're Singaporeans. Yeah. They, uh, Singapore now has the highest per capita income in the world. And their resources? Brain power. Uh, the Muslims in Singapore are the smallest community. Yeah. And the president now is Halima uh, Fayyad, I believe her last yeah. name is. And they're only about 10% of the population. She's a woman. Yes. Well, that tells you something. And, right and there. with the hijab, yeah. with, you know, with my yeah. respect and everything. Yeah. But so to them, you know, her religion is, is Islam, yeah. but her position, her actions, her work is always for Singapore. Yeah. I hope that in Canada, uh, you know, Maxime Bernier came up with this thing uh, not long ago, and he said, look, you know, we welcome immigrants from all over the world, but when you come to Canada, let us start become Canadians, all of us. Back to our community, yeah. I know we've heard. Uh, yeah, no, that's great. So our, our community, uh, that's one of the best and uh, most distinguishing, uh, if you will, traits of our community when uh, they started coming to Canada. What year was this around? Well, first of all, I want to say this, that yeah. I, I don't speak on behalf of anybody, so I'm not, you know, neither the, uh, but I speak on behalf of myself. Yeah. Uh, it could be information that I've gathered um that they say that um, 
the first people from Yanta that arrived here were 1882. And that was confirmed by Nicole Goring and the... Uh, at the Alberta legislature not long ago when she congratulated the Lebanese on the 75th anniversary of the independence of Lebanon. A reliable source. She said that the Lebanese have been coming to Canada since 1882. And she talked about people from Yanta. She said that uh, two of the families, the first family was the Hamiyi family in, in, um, in Manitoba. Then she mentioned the two families, that, the two people that arrived here in 1896. One was called uh, Salum Halabi, Sam Halabi, mm -hmm. and one was Faris Abdul Haq. And the lady that gave her and gave us the information, there's a manifest of people arriving in um, Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. Halifax, which is peer. Well, that's what you have to get to first. <laughs> yeah, no, really, uh, yeah, yeah. Peer, it was it was a peer twenty one, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, the manifest says uh, Sam. Or Salum Halabi Yanta Syria, Feris Abdul Haq Yanta Syria. So it's Be documented. Yeah, so it's documented. Yeah. That's what this lady said. Yeah. Sal it was Salum Halabi's daughter who was in Hannah, and unfortunately she, she passed on when mm -hmm. she was 94, 95 when wow. she passed on. So there could have been people in between 1982, I mean 1882 and 1896. And uh, 1896, but we know, um, we know, Jidna uh, Alex Seifuddin, I think he got here in 1903, and he was in Hannah as well. And the first uh, coal mine in Sherness, Hannah wasn't even a city or town yet, mm -hmm. it was started by Sam Halaby. Ferris, uh, Abdul Haq went to Swift Current, Saskatchewan. And that's where the family lived uh, all their life. The important thing that was, a lot of the important things that were mentioned uh, at the uh, legislature by Nicole Goring is the fact that the Lebanese, when they arrive here, particularly those people that, that I mentioned, they became part and parcel of the community. Um, Sam Halaby and his two sons, Alex and Stanley joined the Canadian Armed Forces in 1939. This is all documented. Yeah. And one of and and uh, Stanley lied about his age uh, so that he can join and go. Join the army. He did. What was the age uh, requirement? I think it was then? 18. Okay. And then he was I think 17, but he told them he was 18. And I don't yeah. think that they needed many IDs at that time. No so anyway, they went behind. No. <laughs> so they went like they went to uh, you know to fight the war in, in uh, with their Canadian brothers. Yeah. And Alex uh, Sam the father and Alex the brother came back but Stanley gave the ultimate gift of, of life. He gave uh, uh, he, he's a martyr that gave his life and that's what they say in Hannah they have a I guess at the legion they have his name and they have a picture I, and I at home have something from the Ministry of Defense mm -hmm. the Canadian Ministry of Defense that says you know his number and where he he actually uh, died when the Canadian army was invading uh, it's a place in Italy called Casino a lot of a lot of Canadian soldiers died there so the point is that when they uh, whether it's 128 years or whether it's 128 days when our people come here, they become part of the community. They uh, join the uh, community leagues. They participate in hockey and they they work um, for um, community associations. Uh, you know, we already we have an MP who's uh, who you know came to Canada as an immigrant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And we shall have an MLA very very soon. Yeah. Inshallah, Ed, Ed Ammar. Yeah. And that tells you that these people don't just sit secluded and they maintain their culture and they just work within it, but they maintain a lot of the culture they bring with them, but they adapt to the newly adopted culture, which is the Canadian culture. Participate not only politically, but culturally and and, you know, and really, in. of course, and and I'll tell you, I mean, you know yourself that, uh, you know, at home you participate in a lot of your culture and of course. 
the food and the music and the dancing. Oh, and the food. Like, Is there yeah, anything everything. better than that? I mean, no, no. <laughs> but I mean, but out there, yeah. when you participate with all the other yeah. Canadians, you're not any different. So are my kids. That's specifically because we really appreciate the fact that God has given us the actual um, grace for bringing us to the greatest country in the world, which is Canada. It's been said that we lure a lot of Canadians into our homes because our food is so great. Well, not. Uh, I think that's, <laughs> that's fine. Our trap. That's nice of you, but I mean, it's not only the food. <laughs> my mom's food has lured, lured a lot of my friends, and the reason I still have friends. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I mean, you can you can ask uh, any of, of of you know they're all your friends. You can mm. ask them. Anytime they brought people with them for lunch or dinner or anything else, they wanted to stay. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's it's not. It, that's true. I know you're you're saying. Yeah, the food, no, the food just, is right, but yeah. I mean, it's the hospitality. Of it's the the way we treat people with the respect, it's the your mother and my wife and, and everybody yeah, else that, of course. you know, when the kids bring somebody home, they become part of the family. Yeah. And, you know, I grew up in, in Beverly. I used to go to school and um, on the weekend I used to deliver groceries uh, from a place called Tomboy that, we, uh, that my brother owned. Mm -hmm. And it was Ukrainian families mostly yeah. that I delivered groceries to and they did the same thing. The ladies would invite me in. They'd say, no, you're not going to walk back without having uh, a bowl of soup, etc." So people have basically the same kind of culture, you know, human relations, respect for elders, respect for people. But our people, it becomes very natural for them because we come from an area in the world that has been in the making 10,000 years. Yeah. Like our basic culture in the what's called Levant or the Fertile Crescent. Some might say the beginning of civilization it itself. It is. Yeah. It is. I mean, I, when I taught social studies in Canada, we used to talk about uh, where did agriculture begin. Was this in Ontario? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and here in, in Edmonton as well. Uh, where did uh, agriculture begin? Um, it was in Mesopotamia in, in Iraq. Um, the first alphabets, in, where are they? From Biblos, from the first writings, yeah, yeah. Uh, The first uh, <clears throat> laws, the, who, who's the father of all the laws in the world? Is Hammurabi, he's, he's part of our, our culture. I mean, we can name a lot, but I mean, that was, that part of the world, which is uh, obviously before there were no borders among them, you know, uh, they have been able to develop so many good things for humanity and they have did not keep it to themselves. They just gave it to the world. Mathematics, the zero yeah. then, and you know, I mean, yeah. even when I used to te teaching math, you know, the numbers we use, mm -hmm. they're called the Arabic numerals. Yeah. So it's, it's not, it's not just like, we're not, we're not new people coming to a culture. We're cultured people coming to a new culture yeah, and we contribute to this culture mm -hmm. and I was very um, pleased and very honored when uh, uh, our, the, the former Prime Minister of Lebanon Shafiq Hariri mm -hmm. he's a martyr for Lebanon and for many many people and I was invited to the conference where he was speaking in Ottawa for four days and uh, Paul Martin who was the Minister of Finance at the time and John Chrétien and we were at a dinner for him and Paul Martin stood up and he says Mr. Prime Minister I want you to know that Canada is is a lot better and Canada is more successful and Canada is more attractive and Canada is more stable and Canada is more uh, you know it, everything that's good about Canada because of the Lebanese community because of the contribution of the Lebanese community so our people are very, very uh, good people. Beautiful for, statement. Well, that's exactly what it was said. And I mean, th this tells you that when the Lebanese particularly, or people from that whole area, uh, and then we can zero in on Yanta now, mm -hmm. uh, they came here, they became, uh, they even changed their names. You know, so Ahmed became Charlie and uh, <laughs> Muhammad became Mike. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they really wanted to adapt. That It wasn't that they, they were so you know, possessive about their yeah. names or cultures, etc. So yeah. from our own, uh, from uh, our, in Edmonton, 
there are probably about more than 3,000 people. We don't have specific statistics, but mm -hmm. uh, estimates that uh, trace their origins to Yanta. And uh, I was honored to uh, to accompany two, two Canadian ambassadors to Yanta at various uh, times. Mm -hmm. And uh, Martin Colicott was the first one that went there. I forgot the year. But, uh, you know, we did a tour in the villages surrounding Yanta. And we got to Yanta and there were, you know, Canadian and Lebanese flags. And we, we got into the school. And I believe the teacher stood up the students and she said the national anthem. Mm -hmm. So he thought it was going to be the Lebanese national anthem. It was the Canadian national anthem. And he looked at me, he says, are we in Edmonton here? Are we? <laughs> so you could see that even those that come here and go back, they maintain that Canadianism in them. Mm. And that's exactly what I'm trying to say, that let us all emphasize the fact that we're Canadians. And it goes both ways. It goes both ways, yeah. 100%. So that Martin Collicott went up there, and then we had uh, Haig Sarafian that visited Yanta, and they're always so amazed with how, in fact, uh, Martin Collicott said to them in Beirut, to the... Uh, I think it was a meeting with with the Law Society of Lebanon because we had Bab Lanesi and Sami uh, Allah Mikmel and a few of us. We were helping the the Lebanese Law Society to establish a legal assistance program for the non documented. Mm -hmm. So it was it was pretty high up when yeah. people met with us and he stood up and he said, Look, our our uh, role as ambassadors is to create cordial relations between people. He said, oh, in Yanta, they're already way ahead of us because, I mean, they, they sang the national anthem, the Canadian national anthem. They spoke with me. It, was, it wasn't even English. It was Canadian, and everybody said, uh, welcome to Canada, eh? And then, like, he, he was very, very open That sounds with that. Canadian. It's, it sounds pretty Canadian. <laughs> yeah. So, focus back to Yanta. I think there they are probably about 3,000 people. And How many of them are still there? Because, I mean, obviously... Our town is, is beautiful and it's riddled with beautiful homes from all the hard work that's been accomplished uh, abroad and overseas and here. Um, there aren't many of us there. I mean, we, we use it as a retreat in the summer and that. Yeah. How many people are still, like how many of, uh, of us in Yanta are, are living in the homes? Like, are we talking a few hundred, a thousand? Where are we at? Do you know the, well, if you, did if, you bring your stat book with you? <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to exaggerate, I'm going to have to say they're probably in the winter time seven eight hundred people well wow. but in the summertime of course that goes up to 2500 yeah, yeah because a lot of people from here and from all over the world i mean there are people from venezuela oh yeah from colombia from yeah. all over they go to yanta and yeah it is it is it is a place where i think many of the kids including uh you know yourself, your, your, yourself yeah. when you had a choice uh, whether to go anywhere to Mexico, Mexico Hawaii, or Brazil, yeah. you'd say, "I want to go yeah, to I want to go to Lebanon. So, so there's that that connection, yeah. and I mean, there are a lot of reasons for it. Of course, you know, the people there. Um, we are well known uh, in Yanta to be as just one family. Mm -hmm. uh, when when I grew up, I didn't even know the last names of people because they were called by their name and their father's name. So you mm -hmm. didn't even know what their family was. <laughs> yeah. And here as well. You know who the elders were. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, but now here, I mean, you could see that. You could see. I'm so proud of, of your generation and you, and the younger ones, whether they play hockey or soccer or they uh, get together on the weekend, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They get together not as families, but as one family whose origins are in in Yanta. Yeah. Uh, our people came. Uh, they settled, as I said first in Swift Current and in Hanna. And then they started, if you will, uh, coming to Edmonton. Edmonton grew a lot bigger. Uh, and uh, Delilah said to me, our daughter, mm -hmm. when we were in, uh, in uh, BC at one time, in Kelowna, and she said, why did our grandparents decide to <laughs> settle in Edmonton? Why didn't they it come here? It must have been a cold day when she said <laughs> yeah. that, right? No, why, why, didn't, why didn't they? But, you know, it so happened. Yeah that they settled here. There were people in Lake Labish, and right now there are people all over the province, but mostly uh, the, the, the people of Fianta. And people that are leaving Venezuela and Colombia and Brazil, they're coming here too. So we've become 
That's a that's a, very, a climate a shock very large, for you. Yeah, very large community. Yeah. So, besides all the stuff that we brought with us, such as our culture, our 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 amazing food, our upbringing, our mannerisms, we brought a religion with us. You know, and I know that religion is one of those topics that takes hours and hours to really, if you want to go through in with a fine tooth comb and to, to great detail. But I thought, you know, a, a lot of us, especially guys my age and younger, our religion is one of those religions. It's a Druze religion, the Muwahideen as they call them. Uh, our religion wasn't one of those religions that's a really old one. It's a, it's a fairly recent one. If, I mean, if you want to disclude Scientology and all that. But it's uh, the year uh, 1100 uh, and, just, and around just there. Just before that, just before. Yeah, and, and a lot of people have not, not a hard time explaining it, but because of our, 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 our willingness to participate and be Canadian uh, as well as Lebanese and Druze, um, we, don't, we don't really have a, 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 a very uh, detailed understanding of, uh, of our religion per se, our practices and things like that. And I know you don't, uh, you don't, uh, you know, you don't come around and, and talk religion and, and, and emphasize it and be a religious person. But I thought maybe we touch up a little bit on that besides the, all the other things that we brought up, our, 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 our Druze religion, our, uh, our, our star, our, uh, you know, um, you know, however people explain it. But I just thought we'd, we'd maybe touch base on that a little bit. For sure. I'd, yeah. I'd be happy to, uh, again, I want to emphasize that uh, when I talk about the Druze, I, I'm not representing anybody or speaking on behalf of any institution or association at all. I'm, I'm speaking about my own very, very humble uh uh, information that I've gathered and I've learned and uh, I think uh, and we will be able to touch upon some of the yeah. things but obviously uh, not the religion itself because really in my view uh, there are two distinct it takes more than 45 minutes <laughs> <laughs> it takes more than that uh, there, there are two distinct uh, if you will uh, institutions there's uh, our existence as a social group mm -hmm. we're called Druze yeah We've existed for over a thousand years, and uh, and there are many, many, many reasons for our survival, and uh, and you know we we can uh, go into that, but it'll, it'll take a lot mm -hmm. of history, etc. A but, few but, episodes, <laughs> yeah. But the, but the fact that the yeah. fact that you know the social group uh, as Druze continued for a thousand years that bespeaks about their courage and their commitment and uh, their you know their protection of of what they believe in and then uh, there is the if you will the institution of our faith which is Tawheed uh, you know we are Muwahidun hmm. uh, Muwahidun if you want the literal translation of it it's we are monotheists mono is one and theists the believers and the one hmm. we believe in the oneness of the world uh, we believe in the oneness of the universal mind and we believe that in the oneness of the human race, we don't um, ask anybody to become a muahid mm -hmm. because to be a muahid, you could be in any other religion mm -hmm. if you believe in the in the tawhid. Yeah. Uh, then, as I said, that's distinct from being from being a druze. And really, uh, our faith, and I don't call it a religion, because to me. A religion is really, and again, that's just my opinion. It's it's an organization that has hierarchy and it has places and offices and places of worship and uh, and uh, you need to progress through the hierarchy of different people in order to reach the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. uh, in our Tawheed faith, it's a direct relationship between you and Allah. So, so the, in that organizational sense, we're not a religion, mm -hmm. but we have we have a very very strong faith that you or I or anyone who has that direct relationship uh, becomes a muhid can connect, connect directly. Yeah. And but religion itself, I mean, the religion. Sorry to cut you off. No. But religion itself is is the pursuit of uh, becoming closer to God, whatever avenue you decide to take. So is it religion itself? Like you can't really downplay any religion because the goal of any religion is to get closer to uh, to God. No, the, the truth is this. Uh, Tawheed does not 
compel you to follow uh, a certain religion or a certain belief. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it, it really has uh, the, the glory of this relationship with Almighty God and uh, the, the importance of your conscience and the importance of your mind because God uh, gave us our mind and our mind is the superior governor of our life and of the whole universe. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other religions. They have different pathways of really finding God and, and becoming godly people, for yeah. becoming very faithful, and, and all the best to everybody. Yeah. We, we don't, we as Druze, if you will, or as Muhdin, we don't even proselytize our faith, or we don't go out there and advertise it. We don't recruit people. Mm -hmm. Because we don't say that in order for you to have a direct relationship with God, that you need uh, a certain sheikh or a certain priest or a certain building or, certain or a building place, or anything. Yeah. It's just you go ahead and do yeah, it. Yeah. So uh, the, the, a lot of the, the you know, uh, there are a lot of questions uh, about, and it's coming not just from you, from all the generations. Yeah, and that, and, I, and that's kind of why I'm asking. And it's, it's very just, important. It's not it's just very, me. Yeah, and 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 I don't think that I'm I'm the. <laughs> I'm the uh, the one. To, Am to, I putting to, the pressure on? No, 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 no. <laughs> if I I'm, see you to start to sweat, I'll change the conversation. <laughs> well, look at this. No, you're not putting that. But you know, I I always need to speak specifically about this, and yeah. I I know what my limitations are, and they're yeah. very 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 narrow. Uh, I know some. Or you're very humble. Well, thank you very much. But uh, truthfully, uh, whether whether your generation or the younger ones, or even the the newer generations, they're going your granddaughter. to granddaughter. My granddaughter, yeah, Mila. <laughs> Mila. You have, and you have a shout wonder, out to Mila. I yeah, hope she <laughs> sees us one day and, and oh, uh, I'm sure she will. <laughs> yes, I'm she sure will. she will. And then she will know I loved her more than anything else in my life. And <laughs> my plan and, is to keep the podcast on until then <laughs> shalla, she can recuperate shalla, all the information. Shalla. And you know, she has a beautiful picture of you and her and Yeah. So all, all these generations, they have questions. Yeah. And it's not only the Druze young people. Uh all young people have questions because the whole world has changed so much. Um, I mean, you have right now in Japan robotic people who read the news and who interact with with I another. I saw a video of that the <laughs> other day. Actually. And I mean, you know, people people are saying, well, you know, if if man can create something close to start, to... <laughs> to start thinking, yeah. and intelligently, yeah. and process. Uh, 50 million different pieces of information within a second, mm -hmm. just like the human brains does. Even better sometimes. What is it then that we are learning about this religion? Mm -hmm. uh, I was really uh, uh, taken aback the other day. I was watching a very, very short video on, on a robot. It was it was a lady that, that this guy was interviewing and she was a robot. She was he was asking her questions. I'm not sure whether you've seen that. And she was reacting to it just like a human being. I mean, you would be so surprised. I guess you won't. Mm -hmm. uh, she talked about, and he would ask her different questions of different areas, but her brain uh, was able to process all these questions and to answer the right questions. At the end, yeah. she said, but there are things a human being, or there, there's something a human being has that I will never be able to have. A soul. A soul. Who said that? And <laughs> she said that. She said that. That's no, I'm talking about you. Chris. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Chris, uh, Chris is with us by the way. I yeah, don't know oh, if anybody yeah. knows. Hi Chris. Yeah. I don't think you can see We're Chris. We're all uh, <laughs> focused zero day. So on she you. said a soul. Yeah. And and this this really is you know, in my my own very small world, mm -hmm. that's where my connectivity with the, the power, the universal mind, it's the soul. I don't that, think anybody can argue that. You know, okay. So from that point of view, I think there are a lot of people now are saying, yes, our soul is connected to, to Almighty God, but let us reconsider what has taken place in the past 2,000 years. I mean, there are religions way before Christianity. I mean, but, mm -hmm. you know, quite uh, frankly, from 2,000 years ago, Christianity, Islam, and all There's the been about <laughs> half a dozen dozen well like quite a lot yeah. and i mean you know they i don't know how many sects of islam and how many yeah. sects of christianity and that is because people question things and they don't believe in, in other things so yeah. 
I'd say let's leave this topic. I'm yeah. not here. I'm talking yeah. about in yeah. our general community. Mm-hmm. And let's talk about Tawheed yeah. as a universal faith, mm-hmm. as uh, as the belief in the universal mind and the power of God. And, of course, we believe in reincarnation. And I think I mentioned to you that yeah. I personally was reincarnated from my previous life. And I believe you mind in... sharing that with us a little bit? Well, uh, no, I don't is mind. A, is that too personal? No, no, okay. no, no. I was, I was, I was. Did you uh, commit any crimes then? No, 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 no. I was a lawyer. <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe. It suits you. <laughs> it suits you. It suits you. I know. I remember when we were talking, I, before you get into that, I remember when we were talking, I mentioned the word ethnic and you mentioned to me how you didn't like that word. I don't like ethnicities. And I, and I thought you would elaborate a little bit on that before you go into um, the story about reincarnation. Well, uh, you just, know, just tell me why. No, I'll, I tell why really I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because ethnic uh, will, will point you into a, a very small box that your ethnicity. I mean, what is ethnicity? There's nothing ethnic anymore. The world has, has become just a small village. I mean, a Chinese person is not ethnically Chinese. It's just because they grew up uh, on a land called China. They interacted with that land, and that's where they gained their identity. They're not because ethnically Chinese. They're not. And and the whole world is changing all over. Like you go, look what happened in China in the past 20, 25 years. I mean, the, their their culture evolution creates a lot more similarities among cultures and among every. So the word ethnic, I don't like. Yeah. And a lot of politicians here, when they say that, I just say, uh, my my dear friend Steve He's Mandel, he goes, yeah. Joe, I know, but you know, I said, no, no, I, I need to speak my mind. Yeah. We should emphasize that we're all, our ethnicity, if there's such a thing, is Canadian. Canadian. We're Canadians. Yeah, I like that. So that's one. I mean, go back to reincarnation yeah. now. Reincarnation is... Uh, because my mother believes that she was she's been reincarnated. Uh, I'm I'm sure and, I'm sure and so do you. Yeah, well, uh, let me let me tell you before I tell you my own story. The you know refer you to um, a very important person who has written about uh, reincarnation. His name is Brian Weiss, and one of his books is called uh, One Soul, Many Bodies. I really recommend that somebody mm-hmm. you all one read soul, it. many bodies. Yes. One soul, many bodies, uh, and and he's got. I think it's in, he's into his third book. He did not grow up as a Druze. Uh, he did not, you know. He, but he, you know. I I don't I don't want to take the gist of the books away. But, but the beliefs are very similar. It's not only the it's the actual applied beliefs. He tells you why he believes in it because he has experienced with many of his patients when he took them back to their previous life. Mm-hmm. They were able to discover the nucleus of their, if you will, disease or you know, their uh, anything that's harming them. When they discovered it, they were able to, to defeat it, it wow. and heal it. Wow. So I, I, w- I would really recommend it. Yeah, personally, I was uh, I was uh, from Suida, from Syria, mm-hmm. and we were in uh, Lebanon, three of us, my, uh, a dear friend of mine and I, and we were in Alay, and we were going back to Syria with the driver and... And ironically, when we got to the borders of Yanta, mm-hmm. a, big, a truck very close to Syria. Yeah, a truck hit us, and um, I died. And I was born into this body, if you will. this physique, <laughs> this physique. Yeah. <laughs> but you remember it with such detail. Uh, I did when like, I was uh, younger, much younger. Yeah. I did. I remember. I remember what I remembered. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I remembered exactly that I was taking my ambulance. I remembered. The name of my cousin that was very close to me. I remembered what the uh, our, our house looked like. Uh, so a, a lot of the things. But did you came, ever reconnect with any? A of little these bit. People? Yeah, some, some. Wow. Yeah. So you seeked it out? No, I didn't. No, I really didn't because I di- I didn't I didn't want I didn't have any if you will emotional desires to do so. But wouldn't it be interesting just to see if these are just wild fantasies or dreams or For sure. vivid? You know what I mean? It, they were actually proven by other people, not okay. by me. And you know, a lot okay. of the people that you I you sent out to, your soldiers to to do the work and no, come back. no, no. <laughs> they it just happened so yeah. naturally that uh, I recognized a picture in in Yanta, yeah, and of, of my uh, previous life. And mm. they, I mean, everybody was just floored to say I said I was this guy. They said you were Jamil Bouasali. I said yes. And they knew that. I mean, in, in Sweden, they knew that. I mean, there are so many 
stories about how one of my daughters tried to pursue me and to come to Damascus to see me and you know she wrote to me some letters we've talked on the phone etc but so the belief is very oh, the much belief instilled is very in much you. So. I mean it's it's I, and I appreciate the fact that you can say people uh, hallucinate and fantasize and yeah. everything else and this is one No, of I don't no, call no. it that but I mean like no, no. I've had dreams that are very vivid of it's course. sometimes hard to tell uh, truth the uh, or reality from from fiction from 100% you know? and yeah. that's that's in that book uh, that I mentioned one one soul and many bodies they talk about this whether it's imagination whether it's yeah. true so uh, you know many people would uh, I hope many people listen to this and they'll come forward and they'll say well I, I was reincarnated as yeah. well yeah. and it's not anymore just Druze a lot of people all over the world they're saying I mean not long ago we had uh, a, uh, a a boy from India uh, who's Sikh and he and his father with you know their Sikh yeah. uh, attire yeah they were in Haspaya in Lebanon. At least that's the pictures I saw. Yeah. Sitting with their his father in the past life, who was a sheikh, a Druze sheikh. I mean, how do you explain this? Yeah. You explain this that we know. Especially that, coming from two different worlds, if, yes, if you will. And, you know? Yeah, but the, the soul does not have colors or shapes. borders or shapes mm-hmm. or what. What, what do you wear or not? The soul yeah. is, is a pure particle from the holy soul, which is God. And our belief is, is that when your soul, uh, when the vehicle dies, that the soul travels into another male. It goes from male to male and female to female. Yeah. Where a lot of people under this misconception, misunderstanding that we, we go into a bird, a, a, an animal, but uh, it goes from man to man, woman to woman. And I and I one thing I do like about our religion, <clears throat> our our beliefs is that they they teach you to to always be good to your neighbor and always be good to your community because as we believe, you never know when your soul's going to travel from yours to the house next door there. or the house down the street, and you want to be good with everybody. I thought that was so beautiful. That was uh, yeah. such a nice concept. If what? you could uh, really practice that of course well, it, it's it's one of the one of the ways to explain that uh we call it kamis actually the, mm-hmm. the vehicle you're talking about we call the body as a kamis which is the shirt. i didn't know that yeah so we call it a kamis so takamos that means you go from one kamis to the other does kamis. it have anything to do with the word kamis like the <laughs> yeah, of course a shirt, okay. of course well, because a shirt you wear the shirt yeah to a point where it becomes not wearable anymore. Because it means shirt in Arabic. Of That's, course. Okay. And, and they call it the same in, in India, by the way. They call it kamis. Oh, okay. And they talk about, when they talk about their spirit mm-hmm. and their soul, how their soul transfers, mm-hmm. they talk about from kamis to a kamis, mm-hmm. from shirt to a shirt. And uh, that's why, our, you know, we, we always propagate the fact that you be nice to everybody because... You know, you you may become which is beautiful part of in house. itself that idea. So really, I would I would suggest to you, and since you are on a, on a great mission, and I really support you, and I hope you continue to do these things, that you get someone who is a lot more expert. I'm telling I'm telling you the truth. And I'm has not, the patience know, to deal with me? No, no, the patience, <laughs> the patience. I I will deal with you for years, and I love dealing with you. You know that because I love yeah, you I love very you much. Too. Uh, and I appreciate you and respect you very much. Me, you know, too. That, Me as, too. As I do your family, all of them. But the, you need, like when you, when you start to talk about theological thought or religions, mm-hmm. it, it's very deep and it's very difficult and, and very controversial. Yeah. Uh, what we talked about right now is something that everybody believes in. I think they yeah. believe in, you know, universal mind. They believe yeah. in God. The, the, yeah. But when you want to start talking about the actual... Uh, if you will, uh, drive uh, behind uh, faith. What? Why? Why? How did this faith develop? Yeah. Uh, then There's I'm not a... that I'm not that scholar to talk <laughs> about it. So I'm I'm just uh... yeah. I'm I'm leading you down a a, a, a path of uh, pressure right now. No. But uh, okay. So I mean that that answers a lot of questions though. And and thank you for. Uh, for taking the dive with me when I uh, when well, I, I, I hope I hope it, it helps some people yeah, when, when they see this and they uh, well you know the, and then they consider talking. I'd be I'd be happy to speak to anybody that wants mm-hmm. to uh, 
learn more about it, about my own personal experience yeah. and some of the other things that I've experienced with other people too. So, What's your take on when people, because uh, you hear a lot of people, especially Canadians, like being here, you bump into somebody that's <clears throat> non-Lebanese, non-Arab, non-ethnic, if you want to use that word. I know you don't like it, but mm-hmm. if, if um, somebody says, oh, I, I heard that you have to marry a Jews person, like in our community. And you're, you're always left kind of like baffled and trying to explain that, well, let's, we don't mean that we don't, um, we don't condone or accept anybody that's not Druze, as we've discussed over the last hour. Uh, but what's, what's, what's the brief explanation of, uh, you know, something like that when somebody says, I heard you can only marry a Druze person? Well, th- there's no brief explanation. Oh. I mean, you know, and that's I think a, now we're... a contradictory <laughs> straight statement. No, no, because, because really we need, this is, this is something that is quite emotional yeah. as, as well as uh, it, it is something that I, I'll tell you, I answered uh, probably 30 years ago to a young man who said to me, when I describe what, who we are socially as Druze mm-hmm. and as Muhadin in our faith, I described that. And he said to me, I have a friend in school who fits exactly that description. Who's um, non-Druze, yeah, but it's, non-Druze. it's exactly what Why you can't I marry her? Yeah. And, I, and you know, so he put me on the spot, of course, because I mean, people say to you, well, you know, anyone that has those uh, characteristics of being faithful, kind, uh, loving, hospitable, uh, open-minded, etc., etc. So why? Because they were not. And I, I told uh, that particular person, I mentioned the story, I think I mentioned it to you about the bald eagle. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to go too, into too much more details because I'm sure you have other but topics I like to that, cover. But I like that story. But the, the bald eagle is is the emblem. It's, the, it's the, something that's, if you will, worshipped. It's something that's really for the United States of America. It's mm-hmm. their eagle. Yeah. And a uh, year, few years ago, maybe 30, 40 years ago, it was, that bald eagle was threatened with extinction. And uh, th- they thought that, you know, 20 years hence, uh, they're not going to have any bald eagles anymore. So the United States of America, the greatest, I mean, the, the, the most powerful country in the world, 300 million people, they uh, gather, they put together 18 teams of two scientists each, 36 scientists, that came to Canada all over six months to go all over the mountains in Canada and the valleys and the everywhere to find bald eagle chicks or bald eagle eggs to take those back to the United States to maintain take care a of species of birds called the bald eagles. Mm-hmm. So I said to that gentleman at that time, mm-hmm. I said, look, we, in comparison to the whole world, we're just probably a very, very small dot. We're There's one, only just over a million. Almost a million people. Some people say two million, one and a half. It doesn't, you know, let's yeah. say two million. Mm-hmm. And I said. And that's not it, just in the Middle East. That's all over the world. From Australia to. Australia to, well, in Canada, I think we're the largest uh, Druze community outside of uh, the Arab countries. How much would you say? How many of us? Two hundred thousand well, in Canada? In Canada? No, no, I don't think so. I think we're probably around forty, fifty thousand. If oh, you okay. consider Alberta, Ontario, and and Quebec, yeah. and that's where okay. most of the Druze. So, okay. but anyway, so I said to the, I said to him, I said, look, it, it is our responsibility to continue to maintain, if you will, this species of birds. If the United States emphasized so much maintaining a species called bald eagles. Don't you think it's our responsibility to continue this wonderful, unique, very sophisticated, very well-respected community called the Druze? He looked at me and he said, you know what, this is the first time, Uncle Joe, that anyone puts the responsibility on my shoulders to maintain and continue the, the Druze social group. So. This is a very, very important topic. It's a very sensitive topic. And I think that it's it's very important for us to continue uh, this whole tradition of uh, that's been going on for a thousand years. Mm-hmm. And basically for two reasons. And I always say to my to my own children, I say, look, we're we're not better than anybody. We're just different. And this difference is not a bad difference. It's a good There's difference. There's nothing wrong with being There's different. There's nothing wrong with being good different. 
And be and because we don't really proselytize, we don't advertise, we don't bring people in. So you need to maintain what you have. And that's a very, very, if you will, uh, very small and very brief explanation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that it is, it is a responsibility. But when you start, when you want to start talking about, as I said, about the theology and why and why not, and whether Tawheed is only, <coughs> you know, and we're not, Al-Muhidun <coughs> are not only Druze. Muhidun are all over the world. They can be anything, essentially. They can, they can be of, you know, of anybody. And be or, anywhere. Anywhere. So, so that is that is uh, something that uh, I know it, it touches upon raw nerves with a lot of people when you talk about this. But I think what we need to do is we need to be calm and collected. Then we need to discuss it. Uh, outside of emotions, we need to discuss it logically, mm-hmm. using our mind that God gave us the mind, and we take great pride in the universal mind, which is al aql al kulli. So, now hopefully, this is the kind of conversation that takes place and sparks stuff like that. I sure hope so. And it's not to be <coughs> controversial, uh, controversial or anything like that. It's just that uh, you 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 listen to your community and you hear a lot of people discuss it and talk about it, and and it's always nice that maybe a sixteen, seventeen year old is listening and it's like, oh, I understand. You want to preserve your beliefs and 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 um, and um, you know your 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 culture and 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 all of us at the end of the day, Uncle Joe. If we had a choice, Chris, or anybody else from any background, any religion, any culture, if we had a choice to befriend, meet, fall in love, marry somebody that um, shares the same beliefs, uh, cultural upbringing, food, why wouldn't you choose the path of least resistance? Because it's very easy. 100%. You know, but love doesn't always choose yeah. you that way you <laughs> no, don't always that follow is true. you know what i mean no, no, that's so it's true. okay because they say the average person meets about ten thousand people in their life well i don't you're know you're thinking how maybe, many of them maybe, are going to be maybe a couple of hundred in my case but, <laughs> <laughs> but how many of them are going to be Druze? that two percent of them we'd yeah. say you yeah, know what yeah, i mean so it's, it's 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 a select few yeah but i do understand your point i i get it and it's very well founded but um that's a good explanation. Well, thank we you. We won't ask no, you for I appreciate no, 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 you can. But I'm telling you that I think it, I hope it sparks, as you said, some thinking and talking among the younger generation to know that it's not just a, a fad, or it's not just because we're prejudiced. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's something that needs to be discussed, as I said, logically, mm-hmm. and with with a lot of depth mm-hmm. as to whether you know a thousand year old. Uh, social group mm-hmm. faith is different than the social yeah. phenomena yeah. wants to continue mm-hmm. and whether it should continue I believe it should yeah. and it should because it's, it's it's a wonderful social group that has survived for a thousand years and it's really a great example to a lot of people in the world because because of the openness because of the acceptance yeah. because of, of our uh, relations with anybody anywhere you live you know, we you could see that those Druze uh, have adapted to uh, their geography, their uh, social settings, and they become part of it. And well, those who've experienced it will agree with you. Of course, Th- those who you know they go to church or yeah. they go to the mosque or they go anywhere because to pray and to reach uh, out to God, you don't need a specific, specified um, house of worship. Anywhere you are, I mean, I was, I was, in, I was, in, in, Th- thought, I was yeah. in Thailand. I was in Malaysia, and you know, I went to a mosque in Malaysia, and, and I felt very, very spiritual. I went to a temple in in uh, Thailand, and I felt the same. I mean, it was the same feeling for me. And you know, I, we go to church here, and we go to the mosque, and we go. So, so this is really where we are because we, you know, we've we've been endowed with an open mindedness and and a real accommodating soul. And I think that's what we need to talk about. I don't go to more. a lot of churches, but I was one. I was. Uh, I went to uh, the church in New York, in Manhattan. Yeah. And I walked in there, Uncle Joe, and I walked in there, and I felt that same feeling that you're talking about. Yeah. I'm not a religious person. I don't uh, yeah. uh, pr- practice it too much, and it's not like on the top of my mind. But you can't help but be overwhelmed when you walk in there. Of course. Even though you might not, air quotes, belong, but. Uh, you're, you can't help but be taken in by it. Uh, wh- whatever the feeling is, there's a there's a power to it. You know what I mean? But 
I, I understand completely that, uh, but, but that's part of who we are. My dad was always taught us to be very accepting of others. And so we didn't grow up where it was, it was forced upon you and, and you were pushed into it. It was very, you were, you were, you were taught to be a free thinker. And I guess that's what I love the most about our community, our beliefs, is that we're, we're very open-minded. And, it's, and anybody that's come across us will tell you that. It's a, it's a beautiful thing to, to behold and witness. Yeah, well, with, with our children, uh, this is exactly the same. We, and I know we, you're, you're we, like that too. Well, we grew up together, really, because I was learning more from them than they learned from us. But yeah. it was an, the interaction of thought that develops into concepts that, that are practical and applied. And you see it on a day-to-day basis. I mean, there's a lot of philosophical thought that goes on but that's philosophy. Yeah. But let's talk about the practicality of things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, most of our young people uh, are like you, very open-minded. They're accommodating. Uh, but they definitely are challenged. Yeah. And they are challenging others. And the challenge requires two main things. One is a real explanation as to who we are, what our faith is. And how do we uh, really uh, help others to gain that the knowledge? Because if you fortify your mind, if you strengthen yourself with, with the knowledge of why, and you become responsible to continue this whole process or this whole, if you will, phenomena, yeah. Uh, it's not anymore, well, you know, we were born like this and our family is like this, so we must continue to be like, that's not acceptable anymore. Mm-hmm. So I think we will stop at that and hopefully we can, you can get maybe five or six uh, young people to talk about it. How do they feel? I'd love to. I'd love to have a podcast where I have uh, people from different backgrounds, different beliefs, and to have an open discussion and and, and truly speak about it without uh, any controversy, without any hostility, anger, nothing like no, that, you know, no, no. because I'm very open-minded. So well, that's great. I, I really that's encourage awesome. you Thank to Thank you do for that. answering any questions that I had. Anytime. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, what's I'll leave off with this. <clears throat> what What do you see in the in the near future for our community, our um, you know, our culture? Uh, what What do you hope in, in the next few years? Because obviously, there's um, like we talked before. It, it feels like it's uh, sometimes uh, if it's if it's not really looked after and 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 cared for uh, carefully, it's uh, it, it's 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 uh, deteriorating a little bit. What, what's, your, what's, what's your hope in the next 10, 20, 30 years? What do you like to see, if I could just get tap into your, your heart? Oh, well, thank you. Bit. No, you can. And I think that uh, there are a lot of people who are thinking exactly the same. I mean, we're, uh, if you would have asked 10 years ago, a lot of people were saying, well, we're only in this country temporarily. I, mean, I would say maybe 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. A lot of the people said, well, we're, we're coming to Canada for a few years, and then we're going to go back. Uh, I think we need to uh, accept the fact that this is, this is our country. Canada is our country. And uh, our children are going to be here. Our great, you know, our grandchildren, great grandchildren are going to go up here. But in order to continue that open mindedness, the, the cultural things that we believe in, you need to. Number one is to sit together and find out what the questions are. And there are many. Many, yeah. Uh, and to see whether the answers are accepted by everybody. I mean, it's not... It's I don't not, think they can be. Uh, no, they don't have to be. But I think that when you when you explain the fact that, look, we're here for the next few hundred years, uh, we do have a, a very, very precious being uh, called our Druze community, and we need to continue to have the, this precious being and very respected being. In order for us to do this, there are certain conditions and there are certain plans and there are certain activities that we must do right now. You become and more committed. 100%. And you become more educated because the younger people become more educated and more knowledgeable about why I should or why I, sh- you know, they obviously you're going to have to say people, well, some people are going to say, look, I don't really care what you yeah. say. I don't believe in this. But yeah. the majority is not like that. The majority is saying, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy uh, with what I have grown up 
in in terms of beliefs and and faith i i'm very very committed to this faith of open mindedness and a, and if you will inclusion uh, but i really need a lot more information and knowledge and more responsibility and exactly so that you know and why am i responsible for this yeah if we don't do that you're up, you're absolutely right i mean it doesn't take time for people to start deteriorating yeah. or you know yeah. it just naturally it evolves yeah. into uh, but I, you know, I sure hope that we can we can stop that. There are uh, certain things that are taking place. I mean, here and nationally, on yeah. behalf of the uh, the community. Yeah. Uh, but I think we need people like yourself and and those who are concerned about community survival and continuity to get together and say we're not going to just accept the status quo. We need to get into something better. And and most important is knowledge. And that knowledge uh, disseminated to the younger people, so they can really strengthen their own faith, and they can strength strengthen their own immunity. Yeah. And uh, I hope that happens pretty quickly. Good. Are you going to be able to forgive me for wrecking your hair with the headphones? I, you know, I can't see myself right now, but I think if you have wrecked, <laughs> no, my, it looks good now. I, but you I'm know saying. what? <laughs> if you if you've wrecked my hair with the headphones, yeah. I don't think that this should. <laughs> this podcast should go on. T- <laughs> we'll, we'll just be on no, no. Spotify, not on video. No, I'm just no, kidding. No, no, no. I'm no, just no, kidding. No, Thank you, I'm, Uncle I'm Joe. Very, I'm very honored and very uh, appreciative. That Thank you, you for you being did, here. You did ask me to come on this. I hope it really uh, invigorates some thought. And uh, It was like our coffee date the other day. It's, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, that yeah. was on Valentine's Day. <laughs> it was. That's, that's how boring my life is on Valentine's <laughs> No, you on, and I. You and I. We went were each out. other's Valentine. <laughs> yeah, we were, he, he and I went on uh, together. And yeah. out on Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no. But besides that, you yeah. know, the, 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 I love you very much. I love so you that's, too. So that's not, and I love your family. And I hope this is not the the last time no, that I can no, 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 I can no, talk so. to you in the future, and then we'll see where we're at. So so being your Valentine choice, yeah. you were my Valentine yeah, choice as well. You. So. Next year on Valentine, we might be able to get our families together. That would be Both great. Both of them. Yeah. And then just say. Give hope. everybody a mic. Let them run loose. <laughs> <laughs> and then the little one can speak by then, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Is I'm she sure. talking? Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's talking. <laughs> she won't shut up? <laughs> no, every, uh, you know, everybody says, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mila is, is only two years old. That's a beautiful she, name, by and, the way. And she talks so much. And some people say, "Well, who's she know, taking just, it after?" <laughs> yeah, tell just me. Just consider that who who is around her and yeah. how many words she hears yeah, every yeah. day. And uh, no, she's growing up to be a beautiful. Wait woman. till she dives into the books. Thank you. Tell like them, nifrah minnak, and uh, you have your own kids. And uh, uh, I don't know if I can handle that. We'll see. Well, inshallah, when when nasib comes, it's it's gonna right? happen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you nasib so much. Nasib is what's. Uh, uh, it's the it, destiny. It's, it's the, the karma. Destiny. That's yeah. right. It's what's we'll written for destiny. you. Yeah, with the karma and 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 the destiny that's waiting for you. Inshallah, Allah we, uh, I'm very proud of what you're doing. Thank you. And I hope you continue this. Thank you. And if you feel that uh, some white curly hair deserves to be back on your uh, <laughs> on your podcast, <laughs> I'd be I'd be honored. There's I'd there's no to. other curly hair gray that i want on the podcast well, except thank you. you so much please okay. say hi to all the family and hugs and kisses for everybody well thank you you do the same thank you and, i will and i'm sure that we will get together uh, soon again thank you Uncle thank Joe. you so much and all the best to you and to the beehive the podcast beehive. yes yeah let, thank you very let much let your bees all over the world <laughs> you know that that by the way that that's really part of the tawheed tawheed is is you let so many bees of thought mm-hmm. go all over the world and they pick the nectar of all the flowers of thought and of of really faith that's what they're well they're in danger so yeah Yeah. let's uh, let's let's work together okay okay thanks so (laughs) much thank you uncle joe god bless you thank you